All right, so on our first question here, simplify one part at a time, uh, like variables, like coefficients, things like that. So on my x's, I have x to the fifth over x squared. So I'm going to take 5 minus 2 is x to the third power. On my y's, I will subtract. If there's not a power, remember that this has an understood 1. If it is helpful to write that 1, then write that 1. 4 minus 1 gives me y to the third power. And you're done. That's it. So you can see some of these are going to go really quickly when you do your OTL. All right, this next one, b to the fourth over b to the fourth, cancel. That's equal to 1, so I don't need it at all. It cancels out completely. My c to the sixth over c to the third, 6 minus 3 is 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. And why did I write c again? I don't know. On my x's, 3 minus 2 is 1. I don't have to write a 1, but if I write a 1, that's okay. I wouldn't mark it wrong. My y squareds cancel each other out. And then here's how we're going to use the rule a little bit differently. If we subtracted here 6 minus 8, we would get a negative 2. Then I would have to take that negative 2 and I would have to move it because I don't want to leave any answers with a negative power. So when you have, uh, or when you are applying the subtraction rule, apply it in the order of the larger power. Okay? So the larger power is in the denominator. So I'm going to take 8 minus 6 is 2, but that's going to be left in the denominator. So wherever the larger power is, that's where the variable is going to end up because there's more of them. If I wrote that all out, z times z times z, etc., over z times z times z, etc., and I marked them all off, there'd be two left in the bottom. So that subtraction rule works both ways. So instead of making it negative and then doing an extra step, just subtract in the direction of the larger power, okay? All right, um, as Tavo told us earlier, that when we have powers in and out like this, that means that we're going to multiply the powers, okay? Um, I'm going to make this a two-step question. It's my guess that some of you don't need any two steps that you can do it in one. I'll leave that up to you after I do it, you can see. When there's not a power, it's understood to be a one. So I'm going to have 2 to the 1 times 2 power, which is 4, which is not 4. It's going to be 4. It's 2. 1 times 2, I just said. A to the 3 times 2. B to the 5 times 2. 3 to the 1 times 2. Never leave a number with a power. Always calculate that. So that's going to ultimately give me 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4, a to the 6, b to the 10th over 9, 3 squared. So if you can go directly here, knowing that this doesn't mean 2 times 2, even though it ends up the same thing on that one, this means 2 to the second power, 3 to the second power, you can go directly to the answer. I don't have to see this step. But I just wanted to reiterate that power rule, though. Okay, so I'll leave that up to you. That's, that's going to be your decision. Question on that, what I mean by that? Yes? So what's going to be our decision between? That if you, do you need to write this step where I multiplied 1 times 2 and 1 times 2? Or can I just know that this means 2 squared, which is 4, and 3 squared, which is 9? So I can go directly to my answer without writing that if I want. Okay. okay, so here's these negative powers now. So the rule with the negative power, it's really simple. Okay? It's really simple. 
if there's a negative power, move that thing to the opposite place and it becomes a positive power. So, x to the third, it's a positive power, it's going to stay right where it is. y to the negative second is going to come to the bottom and become a positive power. Now I go at the bottom. z to the negative seventh is going to move to the top and become a positive power. So as things are just moving to the opposite place, becoming positive. Now, all the variables are different, so I can't go any further on this question. I'll get to one where you'll get to go further. So that's just the answer? That's the answer. <clears throat> Here, remember what I said. Anything to the zero power, our rule is that it's one. It doesn't matter how little or how big it is. This whole parentheses is to the zero power. One, no work to do. That's just a matter of knowing the rule. Okay, any questions that you want to ask so far? We're going to get into some of the ones that are a little bit harder, a little more involved, but still not too challenging, not too bad. Okay, you'll see that there are lots of negative exponents in this question. So the first step that I'm going to take is just to move all those things with a negative power. So my 18, my numbers always just stay there. I'll come back to those. X squared is going to stay. I'm just going to work across the top, and I'm going to go to the bottom. Move what I need to move, leave what I need to leave. So why the negative 7 comes down z to the negative tenth comes down. My 3 is there. x to the negative third goes up. y squared stays. z to the negative third goes up. Now simplify. Yes? Does it matter what we're doing? No. Jordan. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to simplify one thing at a time. Let's first do our coefficients. 18 over 3. That divides evenly, nicely. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Then my x's. You'll notice that both x's are on top, which means that we're multiplying. And when we multiply, what do we do with the powers? I haven't done this yet today. We've done it last semester. You add the powers. Tabo knows his power rules. <laughs> then my Y's. They're both on the bottom, which means you're multiplying, which means, as he just told us, you're going to add them. So 7 plus 2 is 9. And then my z's are not. They're top and bottom. So this means I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to take 10 minus 3 and be left with z to the third, no, z to the seventh on the bottom. So when they're same place, you're multiplying, we add. When they're top and bottom, you're dividing, so you're going to subtract the powers. Always subtract in the direction of the larger power. That's where they're going to end up. All right, a similar question, not exactly alike, especially with my coefficients. So let's move stuff first. <coughs> x squared stays there. Y to the 8 stays there. Z to the negative fifth moves down. 16 stays x to the fourth stays, y to the negative seventh goes up, z to the seventh stays. Now, sometimes people start mixing up their power rules with number rules. That negative power rule that just says you move it applies to negative powers, not negative numbers. 
So sometimes people want to move that negative 8 down. No, don't do anything with coefficients. Leave them alone, okay? All right, so let's simplify. Negative 8 over 16 is not negative 2. It's negative 1 over 2, negative half. I'm just reducing it. 8 goes into 8 once. 8 goes into 16 twice. My x's, top and bottom. So 4 minus 2 leaves me x squared in the denominator because that's where my power is bigger. My y's are both up top, so we're going to add those powers. 8 plus 7 is 15. And my z's are both on the bottom, so we're going to add those powers. 5 plus 7 is 12. Um, would I have to have the 1 up top? Would the 1 have to be there? Could I just write it negative y to the 15th? Yeah. Yes, you could. Okay, very good. So both the answers would be acceptable. Oh, those are hard ones. Okay, let's get this one. You go back up. I can. Is it uh, <coughs> negative 1y15? Yeah. It doesn't really look like a 15. Looks like, it doesn't look like a number. So I'll rewrite that for you. My 15 and s's look alike. My 5's and s's look alike. Anyway. Okay, next question here. 16 over 24, we'll leave that for a second. We'll come back to those. x to the 0. It's 1, so I'm not even going to write it anywhere. I don't need to write it. y to the 8th is going to stay there. z to the negative 12th comes down. Now go to the bottom. y to the negative 7th, that moves up. z to the negative 5th, that moves up. So first, we'll reduce this fraction. 16 over 24, the common factor there is 8. So that reduces to 2 thirds. Both of my y's are up top. So I'm multiplying. So I'm going to add. And to my z's, I'm going to subtract because they're top and bottom in the direction of the larger power. So 12 minus 5 is 7 on the bottom. 